On 530 Connect to the Capitol, we are live in studio with Rhode Island Governor Dan McKee. He's here to talk about the biggest political news of the past two days, at least. Joe Biden ending his campaign and endorsing Vice President Kamala Harris. Governor McKee, thank you so much for joining us at 530. Okay, Emily, thanks for having me here. So obviously huge news, Joe Biden yes. bowing out of the presidential race. You have been a staunch supporter of the president. How did you feel about his decision when you heard the news? Well, I think that uh, he made a very selfless uh, and noble decision uh, based on all the information he had. So uh, I support the president, uh, you know, in that decision, I, as I would have supported them if he continued in the election. But I think that is a st historic, uh, and we're grateful uh, to the president for what he's done during uh, coming into a worldwide pandemic, managing us through a, a no recession, creating unemployment, investing in infrastructure. The administration has done really well by the country, but in, for me, very well by the state of Rhode Island. So uh, we're, that's why uh, on Sunday I really made a point to point out the, the fact that the President Biden is going to go down as one of the, um, the, the, the strongest presidents in, in modern history, I believe, based on what I know about presidents. And now to keep the administration's um, policies going that's helping our economy in Rhode Island, keeping people working. Uh, happy to uh, support the uh, Vice President Harris. Yeah, let's talk about your endorsement. So you were actually the last Democratic governor to come out in support of Harris yesterday. What, what took you so long to come to that announcement? Well, I don't think it was long. I mean, it was, uh, you know, just a few hours after the president actually uh, put his, his endorsement uh, for the vice president. I felt Sunday was a day to really recognize the president and to give him the respect that he deserved. Uh, in a way that I believe that um, as, as governor of Rhode Island made sense. And we had every intention of, of, uh, of uh, endorsing uh, the Vice President Harris, and we did that yesterday along with the other uh, Democratic governors in the country. Do you have any concerns over the next six months of Joe Biden's capabilities to continue leading the nation? No, I don't. And uh, that's why I traveled to Washington a, a, a few weeks back after seeing him in person in February, uh, handle himself very well. Uh, you know, he actually leaned in and asked, what, what, what does Rhode Island need? As I was one-on-one -on -one with him walking out, and I said, we need to build a bridge. And he made sure that uh, there was a connection with his office on that. So I don't, I, and I, that's why I went to see him personally, uh, to see whether there was any reason to really feel that way. Face-to-face uh, -face with him, with 10 governors in his, in the, in, at, the, at the White House, with the president and the vice president. I talked personally uh, to the president, and I believe that uh, he's in, he, he'll be able to carry out the rest of his term and do it in a way that will be in the best interest of the people at, uh, in Rhode Island, but in particular that the nation. So obviously a big few weeks coming up ahead yes. of the Democratic National Convention in August, which you are planning to attend. As I'm a delegate, yeah. and I was planning on attending. Uh, it was a little bit of a different convention than we expected in Chicago, but I think there is a great deal of enthusiasm around the candidacy of, um, of Kamala uh, Harris, right, uh, in terms of the vice president. Uh, the next step is who's going to be the vice, vice president, you know, who's going to run on her ticket. I'm hoping, hopeful that it's going to be a governor of some sort so that uh, Rhode Island will still have a, a connection with them, uh, you know, with the White House in a personal way because I know all the Democratic governors now and there's a number of them that are being considered. Yeah, there's a few on a short list. Do you, yeah. you have close working relationships with some of the people on those short list? Yeah, well, Governor Bashir in Kentucky, um, I've been in his company. Actually, he was my guest here in the state last year, uh, you know, for an event that uh, we helped him out with. Uh, I think that Governor Cooper, Roy Cooper in North Carolina is tremendous, along with the, the governor of Pennsylvania, which is a key state. But he's also been, he was very helpful to me uh, on, on certain advice, and we talked to each one another. So it would be good for Rhode Island uh, to have a, a governor in that seat, uh, you know, come January. Uh, and uh, I'm just waiting on uh, the decision that will be made by the Vice President Harris. And you will be there in yes. attendance. I want to ask you a more local question yes. before we let you go. Uh, the Washington Bridge, obviously, yes. plans set to demolish it shortly. But right now, no, no bids to build the, the new side of the Washington Bridge. What's next? Are you surprised there were no bids? And what comes next for Rhode Islanders? Yeah, so um, we're pleased that we're going to be tearing it down. Uh, you know, and we're pleased that we have a, a legal team that will go backwards from December 11th to hold anybody accountable that should be held accountable. Uh, and as, as well as making sure that we're doing everything we can going forward since December 11th to get that bridge built as quickly as we can and efficiently as we can. So, uh, yes, the, um, you know, we, I relied on uh, DOT along with uh, professionals in terms of putting together the RFP 
Uh, that didn't get response. I, I was disappointed, as many people were. Uh, but we have a plan that will go out for a request for information, and then we'll follow that up with a uh, request for um, proposals. And uh, we have every reason to believe that not only do we have the money in place with the budget that we have, that the taxpayers are not going to be impacted uh, by uh, you know the rebuild of a new bridge that will last our lifetimes. Uh, we believe that you know we have uh, we're going for a mega grant right now, Emily. That we're hopeful that we're going to receive. We just put together financing of long-term bonding to offset uh, federal funds that as they would come in over a period of time. So the the people in the state of Rhode Island, they'll get a bridge, and <laughs> we'll and I'm I'm uh, and I understand that you know our, our west traffic is actually a little better than it was uh, prior to the bridge closing, and our east traffic is worse. And I'm, I'm very understanding that we need to be doing everything we can to accommodate. Uh, the drive time uh, in both directions going forward. So right now you are not expecting an additional impact to taxpayers because no one stepped forward to, to rebuild the first time around? Well, no, I, I don't think it's going to impact uh, the taxpayers because we've uh, set aside with the General Assembly over well over $80 million for our share of a, of a contribution against the 20%, 80% uh, with the federal government. Uh, and we are working on ways to bring in a mega grant that will help us. Hopefully that will that'll be settled before uh, November, uh, one way or the other. So we'll have enough funds uh, to make sure that we can uh, not um, have a, a problem for the taxpayers. And I think that's important for them to hear. Governor Dan McKee, yes. thank you so much okay. for your time. Yes, thank you so much, Emily. Appreciate it.